In today's tutorial, let's do this crochet poncho together. This is not as hard as it looks and I'm going to show you how to cheat the system at the same time. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this crochet poncho together and here's what the model is wearing and here's my example here. In my photograph, my particular poncho is the 5 extra large. Yes it is. I decided to go as big as I could go so that I could use a Karen cake in order to show how to demonstrate this yarn to see if I could get it to go as far as I did and I was so happy that I could. So what you're looking at here is that the model is wearing two panels. One on the front and one on the back and it's joined right up at the seam line here and you have to sew it. But in today's tutorial I'm going to show you a way of avoiding the sewing completely right on her sleeve right here and it happens on both sides in order to create a join that you join as you go. So in today's tutorial I'm going to break it up into two parts. I'm going to show you how to do one of these panels and it's once I get you started and get you on your way it's just a matter of it's going to get bigger and bigger. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and do the second panel but I'm going to cheat the system and show you how I would do it in exactly the way I did it or you can just do the second panel the exact same way as well. So in my version of the crochet poncho I actually used two balls of Karen cakes just like so and the color I used was cherry chip. This here is Boston cream so you can see that it would have a really beautiful mix of more neutral colors if you prefer that in a poncho. So what I decided to do is that I used one ball for the front and one ball for the back. In this poncho there's no front or back really. It's just a matter of you know interpretation on how you want to read it but they're both exactly the same panel so you can wear either or. So what I did is that I did the front panel with one fresh ball and then I put the ball aside and then I did the second panel and then I put that ball aside. And then what I do at the very end we have a lot of fringe that is needed. So you'll see that there's two different colors. Well one color is from one ball and one color is from the other. Chances are your yarn will not be at the same level of of transition. So the next ball may not be in this transition. It could start off darker and then work its way to light and etc. So therefore you have two strands and you grab two strands at the same time and chances are they, they will be a different color like you see here. It gives you a nice effect. I then work from the bottom of the point all the way to the shoulder and then down the other side. So that's something that I kind of did for myself. So within today's pattern you can use the Bernat Satin or you can use the Karen Cake. It's up to you and I'm going to substitute because I'm using Karen Cake to 5 millimeter size H but if you want to use the Bernat Satin you'll need a 4.5 millimeter and what is that? That is a size US size 7 just like you see here. So let's get you started on this and let's go through some of the tips and you'll find that this will work out pretty quick. So I'm just going to use one color for today's uh, tutorial because it's always easier to teach in one color than it is to have switching colors. People get confused by that. So let's start off with the slip knot and let's put our hook and I am using a Karen Cake size 5.5 millimeter size H just like that. So to start off and you'll need to do ba back and front panel this way if you don't plan on doing the stitch uh, slip stitching that I will demonstrate later. So if you're not doing it uh, with the slip stitch both of them have to be chaining of 58. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and go all the way to 58 for me and meet me back right here. So I now have my 58 chains and now what I want to do for row number 1 is that I want a single crochet back along this chain. So going second chain from the hook so 1 and 2 just count back. Go to the back hump of this stitch only and just start single crocheting all the way across your chain. So there's no fancy work here. This is just single crochet in the back hump of the chain and this will create a nice finish and this is going to appear at your neck so you're going to want a nice edge there anyway. So I recommend this strongly. So single crochet in every chain going all the way back across. So I'm coming up all the way across and I'm just single crocheting right into the final chain. So I'm going to take you back to my example because the next row is going to throw you off track. It did for me the both times that I did it and I want to show you a little trick and this will help you as well. Okay so here's where we are right now. This is the chain that's done and now we have to start establishing the chevron in order to get this shape. So we're going to do that right now. So on the ends right here we're always going to end up when it's solid here on the ends there's always going to be four double crochets side by side. So one, two, three, four. And then when uh, what everyone else is is that you'll see that there's three double crochets. Three, 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 four. You get that? So the ends always have four when it's solid on the end and then the other row is just literally a one up and then it creates a gap so that the next time it can come back in. So here's the thing. 
it's really kind of confusing on this pattern and I had to go through it many times in order to get this right here. So here's the thing. Count how many um, spaces are. One, two, three, four, five. Right? So you know that once you get five of these spaces done and you start this you know that this is where the split is gonna happen. So you're gonna put in two double crochets. You're going to put in one more double crochet, chain three, one more double crochet into the same one and then two more side by side. You see that? So there's a total of five stitches used up right here but you'll see that it divides off. Then this side is one, two, three, four, five. It takes you right to the end. For myself I either kept going a little bit too short or I kept going too far in order to get this point because I was just kind of misreading the directions. Don't even get me on about that. <laughs> it does happen to the best of us but if you can get one, two, three, four, five and you're looking for that it makes it a lot simpler. So let's begin a row number uh, I believe this is row number two and this is when we're gonna now start establishing this pattern and then what's gonna happen in row number um, three and four is just a matter of repeating. So we have to do row number two first in order to get this to be established and then the next two just keep going. So once you get the next two then three and four you'll see that it's gonna be um, solid space, solid space, solid space and it keeps getting bigger right at this section here. The sides don't gain any more here. It's all happening right in the middle. So let's begin row number two. So let's begin row number two. We're gonna chain three. Counts as a double crochet. So one, two, three and remember what I said. The outsides here is gonna have four double crochets in a row. So the next three are going to be double crochet. Okay. Don't think about that last one, that chain three as part of the group of three. It's more like a border than anything. Okay. So you got four double crochets there if you count that as a double crochet. So then we're gonna chain two, skip two chain, or two stitches and then go to the third one and we're placing three double crochets in a row again. So one, two and three. Just like that. So I'm looking for five of these spaces just like that to happen. So chain two, skip two and double crochet in the next three. So this is gonna be the second space so far of five that I need. Followed by chain two, skip two and double crochet into the next three. So one, two and three. Okay. Now you can see three spaces. You need a total of five. So chain two, skip two, three double crochets into the next one or next three or one double crochet in the next three. Okay. And now you got four spaces. Let's see. So one more. So chain two and this creates the fifth space. So watch what we're gonna do. So we're gonna double crochet in the next two only. Yes, next two only I said. Okay. So this here is your fi five spaces. Do you see it? So one, two, three, four and five. And now you've got two in here. The next one is gonna be a double crochet but this is the very middle one so you're gonna follow it by a chain three. One, two, three. Coming back into that same stitch right in, right in the same one and that creates that center and then double crochet in the next two. So there's your five stitches used up right in the center to create the turn like that. Okay, so now let's continue to move down the other side. So we're gonna chain two, skip two and three double crochets in a row. One, two and three. Okay, and I want you to skip two or chain two and skip two and three in a row. So I just keep doing that until I get close to the end. So how many double crochets should I end up with the, in the very end? If you're following this should be four right in the end. So chain two, skip two and three in a row. So there should be five spaces left open on this side once you get beyond that center. So here's the center. So I see three so far. So chain two, skip two and three double crochets in a row. Okay, and now there's four that you see. And now the final, so chain two, skip two and you're gonna do three in a row but this is an end. So if you've done it right there should be one stitch left over 
and that is your fourth double crochet which equals the end. Just like that. Do you get that? So now you have it now established as your point and now we're gonna begin to move up to row number three and rows number three and four are the repeat pattern for the entire duration of the length of this poncho. So let's begin. Whenever it's solid underneath, this is row number three, is that the next one has to be a space right, right above it and then this fills in with the double crochets that you have. So whenever it's solid underneath, you are going to simply chain up five. So watch, one, two, three, there's your double crochet, then chain two, that's your chain two space like you saw here. So that five equals all of that. You're then just gonna reach over to the first space here and you're going to double crochet three times into that space. So one, two, and three, followed by chain two, one and two, and jump to the next space. And keep doing that all the way to the center point. Okay, so you're just double crocheting three times into each space, so it's like a granny square. So chain two, going into the next space, and I'm watching for the center point. You can't miss it really. Um, it's, it's pretty obvious no matter what colors you're using. And chain two, and I'm continuing to look for the spaces. So the center point is where this is growing each and every time because we're adding more stitches to the center and I'll show you that when we get there. So chain two, and keep moving along and the next one is the center point. So the center point, the way that we do it ends up creating an extra space every row on both sides and therefore it grows out just like you see. So the next one is this, okay, it's right in the center so chain two and in the center space, what you wanna do is three double crochets. So one, two, and three, just like that. Chain three, one, two, three, coming into that exact same space once again, and then that is your next new corner that keeps the pattern growing. So once you have that done, then chain two and keep working along until the very end. This pattern is exceptionally easy to master. So what I'm gonna do it for you at the end is that um, once I show you then row number four and then uh, show you that you just gotta repeat and to get to the size that you want. The size dimensions are on the pattern as far as how many inches that you want it to go and it tells you how many rows as well. So the five extra large in my particular example was 28 rows and um, what is it here for your, here? Extra small to medium is 20 rows uh, all together and then large to two extra large is 24 rows. So it, this each one of these counts as a row. So this is one and then two. So I'm coming up close to the end. So you remember that we kind of started off with the gap space on the other side. So therefore this side should also have a gap space when you're finishing it and I'll show you that in a moment. So this is the last space here. And to finish this then is just chain two like so right into the very end is just gonna be a, a double crochet. So that double crochet plus these chain two equals chain five when we started before. So let's turn our work and go for row number four. So do you see it? So it was solid here, now it has space, next time it will be solid and that's gonna be row number four. So you're gonna repeat three and four over and over and over. Let's move on to row number four. So moving on to row number four, this time we're gonna fill in this space then and then we're gonna continue to move along. So we're gonna chain up three, one, two, three and remember how there was four here? Well there's gonna be four here too. So the chaining of three counts as one of them and then in this space you're gonna put in your three double crochets. So that gives you back your four right on the very edge once again. And then continue to chain two and move along to the next space. You can see how you can go so fast on this particular project. You're working in spaces and just not really having to think much. It's a great TV project. And I'm working my way all the way to the center point. So what are you gonna do at the center point while we get there? You're gonna put in three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet right into the corner. So I'm moving up to my regular speed because these are very much like a granny square. Chances are if you're doing a poncho, you probably have done a granny square before. And you were looking for 
that center point and it's gonna be obvious because there's gonna appear to be two of those uh, sets of double crochets inside one stitch just like you see there. So chain two. So in this next corner then you're gonna put in three double crochet. One, I should actually wrap my hook first <laughs> or that'll be a single crochet and this is the third one. Chain three, one, two, three. So the chain three is only on the corners okay in between the spaces and you're putting in three more double crochet to turn the corner and then chain two and work your way down the end on the other side. So that's all you gotta do uh, and then you just go back to just doing row number three again and it's just a matter of just paying attention to the sides. So because we have to do two panels uh, identical to each other I'm gonna show you a way of no sewing. So technically you have to do two panels and then sew it together but if you use a solid color you'll never see pretty much the sewing but if you're gonna use variegated like the Karen Cakes you're gonna wanna use a slip stitching technique but it also looks nicer too versus sewing. So that's a choice that you can make and it's up to you. It's what I did uh, for myself. I don't like to sew if I really don't have to so I figured out how to do it and it's a little more complex to start but once you get it started it's actually pretty simple uh, to follow along. So I'm coming up near to the end. I got a space left and that's it. So chain two. So I'm gonna do three double crochets. So watch this. Three into the last space and what I have to do is count up to the third one. So one, two and three and go right into an actual chain three for the final double crochet. Now that is your fourth back on the end. So let's just turn our work and go for row number three one more time. So row number three if you remember, you see it's a space. So you chain up three, one, two, three plus another two so it's five. Okay, so that's chaining up three counts as double crochet. The chain two is kind of the bending over to create the new space. Jump right to the first space like so. So what I wanna do now is that you just have to continue until you get to the length that you want. Just look at the pattern for the length. You'll find that will go pretty easy but I'm gonna start a second one and I'm gonna show you how to do the second one with the slip stitching technique if you don't wanna sew and I would highly, highly recommend it. So let's uh, come back here in just a moment. So at this point in the tutorial you would have had the whole panel done. So I just have a small example because I wanna show you how to do the slip stitching on the end. So you're gonna do the whole thing. You're just going all the way until it tells you to stop for the amount of rows for the size that you want. So the second one you can do exactly identical to the way I just showed you or you can use the slip stitching technique that I'm about to show you. So with a different color yarn just to prove that this works is that I want you to create a slip knot first and instead of creating a chain that stands alone I want you to join it to this one here as you go. So just right in the very end just insert your hook like so and then just wrap it and pull through. So you've now just joined it like that. So do you remember how many um, that you have to do? You had to chain 58. This joining is gonna count as one of them. So this is one already done. So I want you to now chain and you're gonna chain all the way and the 58th chain should be the attaching to the other side of the neck here. So one, two, three, four and five and go all the way here and go to all the way to 57 for me and then 58 we're gonna join and I'll meet you here in just a moment. So remember the first one counts as one and so you just gotta go two, three, four, five and just continue to like that until you get to 57 and then you're gonna join. So I'm now on chain number 57 and 58 I want to join it to the very top corner here. Okay so just use that as your 58th and just join it with the slip stitch. So now you have a chain that is extending across and now we're gonna build out. So every time we go to join now we're gonna join along this side edges here. So let's begin and we're following the pattern as usual but we're gonna just do a slight twist with the, with the slip stitching at the end. So what I want you to do is that we want to um, go second chain from the hook. So again just coming from the back so just start immediately second chain in and I want you to start and just single crochet yourself all the way back across this line just like that okay and I'll meet you at the end of this chain. So as I come all the way across I wanna make sure that this is not twisted in any way so it's kinda laying flat and as I come to the very end all I want to do then is slip stitch to the start like so. So now we're gonna begin the uh, second row which is going to establish the chevron but on this side. So let's turn our work. So but before we turn our work 
we need to move up. So do you see how this is filled in space here? So we need to chain three, one, two, three. This counts as that chaining three that we normally would have started with. And on the top of the chain three, you're just gonna slip it to the top of the other one that you see that is directly right beside it. You see that? Now we're gonna turn. So do you remember how many spaces that we had in order to create um, till we get to the center? Well we had a total of five. So just right where we are right now just move to the next three for double crochet in a row. So one, two, and three just like that. Okay so it's the same on the other side if you look at it from that point of view. You had th uh, four double crochets in a row. Now you got four on this side. So that chaining a three with the slip stitch is one, two, three, and four. So chain two and you were looking for five empty spaces before implementing the corner once again. So we're just gonna continue to move along like we would have normally. So this slip stitching allows you to be able to not have to sew at the end and you can build this as you go as well which makes it a lot more simpler. It's one less headache at the end. And it allows you to use different colors without having to worry about what finding what yarns are gonna go together when you use a darning needle. So let's uh, take a look. I think that there's three empty spaces so far. We want a total of five of them before we do a corner. So we got three, chain two, skipping two. So it's just like we did the other side. The only difference is that the sides are attached to each other as you do this process. Okay, chain two and I got one more to do to get my five. And let me just check it. So I got one, two, three, four, and five. So I got two in a row so far. So the next one is gonna be one double crochet and this is the very corner. So chain three, one, two, three and into the same one you're gonna double crochet again to create that bend and then the next two are double crochets. One and two and now you're gonna move along this side. So here's your, your new corner. So chain two. So the trick on this particular bad boy is to identify the edges when you're moving up when you're doing the slip stitching technique. And honestly it's not a, it's not a hard thing to do at all. You just gotta get used to it. I think in the very beginning I was kinda thrown off a little bit um, but you know what, it's not something that was written anywhere. I just figured it out so that I could uh, ease it up for myself. You know I like to cheat the system and make things easier if I can. And especially if you're using variegated yarn like the Karen Cakes, you're gonna want a slip stitching technique instead of sewing because you know how do you pull a string together that has that many colors all the way along without kind of it not working out all the way across. So we're just uh, continuing along. So I'm looking for a total of five empty spaces. So I got one, two, three, four. So chain two and skip two. So one, two, three and look at that. You got only one left. That means that is the fourth. So just going right into the final one, the four, but watch. So what you have to do you just gotta make sure you're looking at it from the same point of view is just go around the top section of where this is. Go right into a chain not into a space and just slip stitch it and that just pulled it together. So let's move up to the next row. This is row number two. So but before you move, okay, do you see how this side is a space here? This side that we're about to start will have a space as well. So chain three, one, two, and three. Okay, go right into a, a chain for a slip stitching like that. Now it's together and now turn it and because it's a space now chain two finishes the space and then you go right into the first space here for three double crochets and I'll show this to you in a second. So that's how you're gonna move up. Okay do you see that? So now they match each other. So then chain two and then go right to the corner. Corners are always gonna be the same have three double crochets, chain three and three double crochet. Just gonna speed up to my regular self. I know it's quick. Um, you know how to do this already. I've already demonstrated it so you should be able to get be good to go. You're looking for that corner which I think is the next one in my opinion. Yep it is and chain two. So in the corners again 
three double crochet followed by chain three and three double crochet. Okay, chain two and then just keep moving down. So again you're looking for that final edge. The final edge will then have a space. So just like we started on, it had a space. So we wanna make sure that the each side finishes off the same. Now if you've been following the pattern exactly when you go to do this um, they will always line up to be the right um, rows for each side. So you should never have a join where one side is a space and the other side is um, a solid. Sometimes you uh, near the end of the project you just gotta pull it and to make it look like the space and it's not because it's not there it's just sometimes visually it's sometimes it crunches together. Okay so we're just coming to the very final of this row. Okay so we have a space so chain two right and we still have to put in a chain through our ch uh, double crochet into the final so just go into the final right there and before you finish then just right in the top here. Okay just going right into a chain, don't go into a gap space and slip stitch it and therefore now they equal each other. So then to move up then for row number four before you turn it, I keep wanting to turn is that the next row is a solid row. You can see that here. So this side should be solid as well. So let's chain three, one, two, three. So there's your first one. Join it with a slip stitch like so. Turn it and then right in the space itself you're gonna put in three more double crochets. So before we chained up three and just went right with uh, three double crochets in a row but because we're joining it as you go is that you just have to slightly change that and you keep on going. So I'll meet you on the other side of this row and I'll show you what to do and this would be how you would join it with a slip stitch each way instead of having to sew them. So I'm coming up near to the end and chain two and so the last space then has three double crochets in it. So one, two, and three but remember when you have these solid sides there's actually four double crochets in a row. So then the fourth one will be in the top of this chain three that you started with and then just stretch it out and slip stitch it to the same level of the, of the other side and then that will conclude that round or that row. So once you slip stitch it then chain three, one, two, three, slip stitch it again to the next level up and then begin again. So just turn. So this time it's uh, empty space so it will be chaining two and then just jump to the next space with three double crochets. So that's how you chain as you go. So let's just uh, quickly review on how to make the drawstring next and that is done right in the top section right here. So there's gonna be a drawstring if you prefer it and it's up to you if you wanna use it or not. That's uh, completely your business. And so what you have to just do then is just grab one strand like so and you have to chain so that it's 50 inches long or 127 centimeters. So you just, I'm not gonna do that here on camera but one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Do it so it's 50 inches long and then all you're just gonna do is that you're just gonna weave it in and out of these chain spaces. So let's say it's a little bit longer than what it is. So you'll start on one side right into a chain space and you might want to come into something like this so that it's coming in and out of these chain two spaces like so. Okay so then it will be over top of this one under here and so far and go all the way around and then you'll have a lot enough length that you can pull it. The drawstring adds the character of this not stretching too much on the top and again that's completely optional for you. So what about fringing? Let me talk about that. So in my Karen Cake example I have fringing and so I used one Karen Cake for one side and another Karen Cake uh, for another and I was left over with empty yarn with a yarn left over. Not this much of course uh, but I was left over and what I did is that I took two of the balls so one strand from one ball one from another and I measured it and I made my fringing only eight inches long and it suggests to do twelve inches long here for um, for that. So all you're just gonna do is take a tape measure and just lay it down. Once you're satisfied with one length I actually just put it aside as my model so then I just keep doing more and more so just laying it out. So each one of my fringes um, is about the same and you know you can get it pretty close to each other and then you can just do any final trimming you need and I put um, four strands per one fringe. Okay so I got 
actual six here. So I keep one aside as my model that that's what I want and then the rest of it I just keep cutting. So I do a whole whack at one time and then I could go back and do more. So taking this I wanna fold it in half like this and all I'm just gonna do is start on one side. So because the Karen Cakes has a really unique color I start on one side and then I go to the next and then I do this and I keep bouncing back and forth and I do all one side like this all the way up and then I keep doing that then I start back at the bottom on this side here again the middle and then I go back and forth and you'll end up with a really good color mix if you want to. So to do the fringe just insert your hook into a chain two space pull through and then using your hands your fingers just open up that hole and insert the remaining yarn through the hole like this and just pull through like that. Okay so then your next one will be here and here and you just keep going until you have it and then if they're not equal in any way at the end you can just safely just trim along and take out any ones if you would like it to be more equal. That's completely up to you. So that's it for today. This is the cool poncho. This is actually a pretty cool design and uh, the ponchos are now back in so enjoy this. This is a beginner pretty much level project and I think that you'll enjoy it at the same time. Have a super great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.